Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of Inside Enduro. Today we're going to switch it up with a little medical science. It's going to be pretty interesting. You're going to learn some things. Anyone who's had a little arm pump, you may want to listen to this. Today we have a great guest, Dr. Joseph C. McGinley. He's a medical doctor and a PhD. This guy is pretty much probably went to school longer than all of us combined. So welcoming Dr. McGinley. How you doing, man? Great. Uh, glad to be on the show today. Uh, excited to, to talk about some of this stuff and, and hopefully we can get, give some insight into arm pump and, and talk about some easy ways to, to take care of it. This is, this is what we'll chat about here again. Uh, I'm going to try to make the analogy getting back to the mechanics is that um, uh, arm pump essentially is, is your failure of the forearms. And when that happens, uh, you know, you really find it hard to compete, right? It's hard to hold on, hold the grips. It's hard to shift. It's hard to hit the brake lever. Uh, so, you know, this really is failure of the of the muscles of the pumps of the forearm, and and we'll talk about that. We'll see what that means here in just a minute. So, arm pump. Everyone knows what it is generically. Though any of us who have ever put a leg over a motorcycle uh, know what arm pump is. But from the medical side, what it really is is chronic exertional compartment syndrome of the forearm. So, a fancy name for arm pump, uh, but essentially uh, exertional compartment syndrome in the forearm. Uh, now, you can see it in all types of motorcycle racers, on, off-road, motocross, enduro, uh, uh, super bike racing. Uh, we've even um, uh, treated some um, uh, uh, BMXers as well, uh, some stunt racers uh, we've had as well, a freestyle. Uh, so, you know, it's the whole mix of anyone that's having that gripping motion or has the uh, 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 need for grip, uh, mountain bike riders, downhill racers, and then even tennis players, right? Gripping a tennis racket, you can get arm pump with that. Um, so uh, arm pump can occur in all these situations and the medical diagnosis for it is chronic exertional compartment syndrome. And if people look that up, you'll see, yep, that's exactly what I have. <laughs> so I uh, wanna make sure we get that out there and, and uh, make sure that people know that they can also see it when they're training on any of these other uh, type of gripping type exercises. And this this really highlights it and and the picture on the left with the tourniquet i'm going to circle back to that at the end of this talk here because um what i want to do is try to make the point that this picture over here with the tourniquet that's what happens when when you give blood so if anyone is has given blood or had to go to the doctor to get a blood draw they put the tourniquet on the arm and all the veins pop out that looks pretty similar to what we're seeing on the right side here uh, of the racer and, and the arm pump that they're experiencing in that right image. So uh, towards the end here, we're gonna circle back to this uh, tourniquet picture and, and hopefully that makes sense because that's what arm pump is. The, the picture on the left is essentially arm pump without jumping on the motorcycle. Uh, the picture on the right is, is after uh, pushing it hard out there on the bike and that's what the forearm looks like. How my, my arm looks like the picture on the right when I wake up in the morning. You know, can you explain that? I, I don't know why. It, it always looks like that. <laughs> so, you know, again, getting into the, the cause of it and, and the title of this, of engine failure of the forearm. Um, again, I like to keep things simple. I, I like to go back to the mechanical engineering and the mechanics. And, you know, I, I, I used to work on my engines all the time uh, uh, when I was racing. And this is essentially the exact same example. So, you know, for a combustion engine, uh, you have the intake valve, you have the intake coming in, you have the combustion and power generation uh, within the engine, and then you have the exhaust uh, where the, the byproducts of the combustion leave the engine. So you have fuel coming in, you have the activity centrally, and then you have the byproducts leaving. That's what happens in the engine. In the forearm, it's the exact same thing. Uh, so the, the engine are the, are the muscles and the artery uh, are the intake. So if you see on that picture on the bottom right, uh, the artery is the intake. Uh, so that's all of the fuel coming in. This area here that says capillary, uh, that's what's in the muscle. So that's where the muscle extracts the fuel. That's where it gets all its nutrients. After that occurs, uh, you have activity in the muscles and then you have the vein carrying out the byproducts of that combustion process. Um, so intake, power generation and exhaust uh, is what you see in the muscle. So exact same process as far as how I see it. Um, you know, obviously there's a little bit difference in the mechanics, but general concept, uh, that's what, you know, I'm sort of getting at with the mechanical engine failure in the forearm. Gotcha. Well, yeah, I mean, your engine doesn't go long. If you can't, if you can't pour it off the exhaust, well, put a banana in your tailpipe, see what happens. 
And, and that's exactly what happens here uh, in the in the forearm with compartment syndrome or arm pump. So if you can imagine that the tailpipe over here is the vein, and if you clamp off this vein, uh, it, it blocks everything up into the engine, which is at the capillaries, and then that results in lack of performance in the muscles. So yeah, the, the banana in the tailpipe is the compression on the veins and, and the, the buildup, uh, everyone's heard of lactic acid buildup, uh, that starts to occur in these muscles. So the fluid starts to accumulate, lactic acid starts to accumulate, and that's what starts generating that pain and pressure that people feel with arm pump. And it actually, as you see the capillaries, it actually pushes the fluid outside the capillaries themselves as well, correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. So the, the physiology here, uh, these capillaries are leaky. So that's how uh, nutrients get across from the artery into the muscle. So it's actually like a, like a filter and fluid goes back and forth in and out of the muscle. Um, and, and it's a, essentially a pressure gradient. And if you, if you increase the pressure on the outflow, that backs up to the capillaries. And because those are leaky, the fluid essentially will leak out into the muscle. And we'll show that on your images uh, in particular where you can actually see the fluid. It, it looks bright on MRI scans when fluid accumulates. And, and that's what you're feeling. So the, you know your, your skin is a fixed layer uh, in your forearm and, and it holds everything in place. Each of these muscles are surrounded by a tight fascia, almost like a covering. And when that fluid starts to fill uh, and leak from the capillary into the muscle, they, the muscles physically do enlarge and they get bigger. And there is only a certain amount of space that that can occur in, in the forearm until you start feeling it as pain and pressure. And then that, that inhibits the ability for the, for the muscles to even work. Uh, so you're absolutely right. The, the capillaries are leaky. That's where the problem occurs. Uh, the fluid leaks across and, and it causes swelling within the muscles. So visual swelling, actual swelling, ultimately resulting pain and pressure. 